I'm really glad to introduce Julien Ferry as our first speaker. Julien is from the Ecole Polytechnique de Montréal by now, and he's going to present a paper on probabilistic dataset reconstruction from interpretable models. The floor is yours, Julien. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to present a work on uh, performing probabilistic data set reconstructions from interpretable models. So in a nutshell, what we want to do in this work is to leverage the structure of a trained interpretable model to build a set of data sets that could have been used to train it, to train it and this takes the form of a probabilistic data set. So first I'll provide some background, then I will present the notion of probabilistic data sets, which was proposed uh, in the literature a few years ago. Then I will show why this notion was not sufficient and how we can extend it. And finally, I will show its uh, empirical usefulness using uh, an example use case. So we consider some uh, decision-making tasks such as credit scoring. For this task, we may have labeled data in the form of a data set. This data set is composed of N examples. Each example is characterized by some attributes and each attribute takes values in a given domain. It can be categorical, numerical, and so on. Each example is also characterized by a label, which is what we will try to uh, learn how to predict. So this is an example data set here. From this data set, we can train a machine learning model to predict the outcome given the attributes. And in the case where this model is used for high stakes decision making, we may want it to be interpretable, which means uh, understandable by a human user. So an example of such uh, interpretable model is a decision tree of a reasonable size. This decision tree was trained on the previous data set uh, that I just showed. As you can see, in each internal node, uh, the tree checks some condition on the attributes values. And importantly, in each node and each leaf, we have the number of examples from each class uh, in the training set that went through it. So for example, in this leaf, there was one example from class zero. Another uh, example interpretable model is a whole list model, which we see here. It's simply an ordered set of rules. The rules are applied sequentially. Whenever a rule matches, uh, the associated outcome is returned. And again, for each rule, we have the associated number of uh, training examples from each class. What we want to do in this work is a data set reconstruction attack. So. Reconstruction attacks are a type of inference attacks. They were first proposed against database access mechanisms. And their objective is to retrieve entirely or partly the data set used as input for some computation, some algorithm, by only observing the outputs of the computation. So that's the general definition. In the particular problem we consider, which is generalized probabilistic data set reconstruction attacks, we consider an adversary was white box access to some trained interpretable model. The adversary also knows uh, the domains of the attributes. This is assumed to be public information. And the objective of the adversary is to build the entire set of data sets that could have been used to train this model because they are compatible with its structure. So this set of data sets will be encoded in what we coin a probabilistic data set. And now I will present uh, this notion, probabilistic data sets, which was introduced in a, in a few years in the literature. So again, here we have an example data set. We coin it deterministic as opposed to the probabilistic ones we'll try to reconstruct, but it's just a normal data set. It contains, for example, characterized by three attributes whose domains are shown here. From this data set, we can train a decision tree again, as shown here. And this decision tree contains information regarding training data set. For instance, we know that one training example belonging to class one went here, and so it has a value of attribute x3 smaller than 1.5. And given that the domain of x3 is one, two, three, for this attribute, the value of x3 is perfectly known, it's one. So this is this example. And by following the different branches, we can perform these uh, domain reductions, and we end up with this object, which is a probabilistic data set, and it encodes all the training sets that could have been used to train this decision tree. More formally, a probabilistic data set is uh, a set of random variable, one for each attribute of each uh, training example. 
each random variables models the knowledge we have regarding this attribute of this example, and it takes values in the corresponding attributes domain. Importantly here, that's the important part. Here, the random variables are assumed to be statistically independent from each other. That's because here, there can't be correlation. Each random variable has a defined uh, domain, and there are no correlations between them. And the probability distribution is assumed to be uniform. It's simply a set of possible values. So imagine we did this. We ended up with a probabilistic data set. How can we assess uh, quantify the success of the attack. In this work, they propose to do it through the notion of average uncertainty reduction. So for each random variable, each attribute of each example, we compute the ratio of its entropy over the entropy of a uninformed reconstruction. The uninformed reconstruction is simply uniformly distributed over the entire domain of uh, the corresponding attribute. So in the worst case, uh, we know nothing more. And this ratio is one. So the distance between the reconstructed probabilistic data set and the original training set is one. And in the best case, we perfectly know the value of the random variable. Its entropy is zero. The average over all the data set is zero. And so the distance is, uh, again, zero. OK, so now I'll show with uh, a toy example, a motivational example, why this notion was not sufficient. And then I'll explain how we can uh, extend it. So again, here we have an example deterministic data set with uh, five examples characterized by three binary attributes. We can use it to train a rule list model, which is shown here. And again, this rule list gives us information regarding its training data. For instance, we know that two examples from class one have the values of x1 prime and x2 prime equal to one. These are these two uh, first examples. For them, we know nothing for x3 prime. If we look at the second rule, we know that for two examples belonging to class 0, attribute x3 prime is true. These are these two examples. But we also know that they didn't match the first rules, the first rule, because the rules are applied sequentially. And so for these two examples, there can't be x1 prime and x2 prime simultaneously true. However, one can be true if the other is not. And so this information doesn't allow reducing uh, the set of values one or the other can take separately. That's why here we had to merge the two cells, because now these two random variables and these two here are not independent from each other anymore. So now we don't call this a probabilistic data set. We call that a generalized probabilistic data set. So formally, a generalized probabilistic data set, just like a probabilistic data set, is a set of random variable one for each attribute uh, of each example. It models the knowledge we have regarding this particular attribute of this example, and it takes values in the corresponding attributes domain. But now, we do not assume the variables are statistically independent from each other. And we see that here, it was not the case. And we know that, do not assume neither that they are uniformly distributed, although here it was the case. So this definition is exactly that of a probabilistic database. And the only way that always works to represent it is to do it through its set of possible words, its set of possible instantiation. This corresponds to the case where all variables are correlated. And so the only way to represent this object is to store all the instantiations of the whole data set. So again, imagine we did this. We performed a, a reconstruction attack. We ended with a generalized probabilistic data set. How can we compute the success of the attack? We still propose to do it through a notion of entropy reduction. But now the different random variables in the performed reconstruction are not independent from each other. And so we have to work with the notion of joint entropy. We cannot compute their entropy separately. That's shown here. And in the general case, the only way to compute this joint entropy is to go through the set of possible words for uh, the reconstruction. And this is the challenging part, because in practice, of course, this set of possible words can be very large. So what we do in the paper is to show that, in practice, for common types of interpretable models, this can be computed efficiently. And in the next few slides, I'll show, in particular, how we can do it for holist models, since it was our motivational example. So first, observe that this uh, denominator, the entropy of the uninformed reconstruction, 
is simply a constant. So these random variables are uh, uniformly distributed over each attribute's domain. They are independent from each other, and so we can decompose the joint entropy computation by summing their individual entropies. And each individual entropy only depends on uh, the domain of the attribute. So this is a constant. And now we only care about the, the, denom the numerator here, the joint entropy of uh, the variables in the generalized probabilistic data set. Now, when the knowledge comes from the structure of a role list, there can be correlations between random variables encoding the same example, as was the case uh, in our toy example. But there cannot be correlations between random variables encoding different examples. So we can actually decompose a bit the joint entropy computation by just summing the joint entropies of each set of random variables, encoding uh, the one example. We cannot do better because, as was the case in our example, these variables are not independent from each other. And so for each example, we'll have to do it through its set of possible reconstructions here. However, as we saw in this toy example, the rule list gives, tells us which combinations are possible and which are not, but it doesn't tell us which ones are more likely. So these different words, these different reconstructions, they are all equally likely. And so this entire value only depends on their number. So we can reduce this sum to this term. And finally, we observe that if different examples are captured by the same rule, we have the exact same knowledge for all of them. And so we can just reorganize a bit the sum here by working over the rules within the rule list. And this here is the support of the rule. This is the number of possible reconstructions provided by the rule itself. And this is the number of reconstructions that are prevented by the previous rules in the rule list. So we end up with this expression. And this is actually easy to compute in practice. So given a rule list, we're able to tell exactly how much it allows reducing the uncertainty of the reconstruction. So how, how much information it contains regarding its training data. So now I'll show uh, with an example use case the usefulness of this notion. And the use case will be comparing the amount of information optimal models contain compared to heuristic models learned using greedy learning algorithms. To do this, uh, we learned both optimal rule lists and heuristic rule lists using state-of-the-art algorithm. We did that with different size and support constraints. And I will focus on the case of rule lists since it was our motivational example, but we performed the exact same experiment for decision trees and we had the exact same trends. We performed our experiments on two uh, data sets. Here are some results. So the plots on the left correspond to one data set, the plots on the right to the other. The full lines correspond to the optimal models and the dotted ones to the uh, greedily built ones. So if we look at the plots on the top, they relate the uh, entropy reduction ratio to the size of the model. So this, the y-axis is uh, how much the entropy was reduced by the knowledge of the model and so, the smaller this value, the more information the model contains regarding its training data. So what we see here is that for a given size, for a given number of rule in the rule list, optimal models contain more information than greedily built ones for both data sets. This suggests that they encode the information in a more compact way. However, if we relate this information, the entropy reduction to the performance of the model, to its training accuracy, the trend is reversed. And for a fixed training accuracy, the optimal models encode less information regarding their training data. So these experiments, and again, the results were the same for decision trees, they suggest that because they result from some global optimization process, optimal models are able to encode the information in a more compact and efficient way. And so for a given size, they encode more information, but for a given performance, they actually encode less regarding their training data. So to conclude, uh, in this paper, we propose a generic framework to encode knowledge regarding a data set. We showed how it can be used in the special case where this knowledge comes from uh, the structure of a trained interpretable model, uh, model. It could come from anything else. And we empirically illustrated the usefulness of the approach with an example use case 
which was comparing the amount of information optimal models contain compared to uh, our heuristically built ones. We can imagine many extensions of this work, including leveraging the knowledge of the training algorithms internal, so whether it provides optimality guarantee, what was the used splitting criteria to select the splits and the attributes, to lower the reconstruction entropy. We can also uh, compute the pair entropy reduction for each example and see whether it significantly varies between subgroups of examples. So does the model encode more information regarding some subgroups, for instance? And finally, we can also try to perform this attack against privacy preserving models and see how we can adapt it and how the success varies. Thank you for your attention.